Good morning, St. Peter's. Great to be here with you this morning. My name is Joe, and uh, we're in a series called Expect the Unexpected. Expect the Unexpected. And last week we had Helen speaking, or as I like to call her, Auntie Helen. Um, and I thought she just did a phenomenal job. So thank you so much, Helen, for that. And uh, you're stuck with me. You're stuck with me today. So let's see. Let's see how that goes. Uh, our reading today is from 2 Kings 4. Um, and it should come up on the screen around about here. It reads like this. The wife of a man from the company of the prophets cried out to Elisha, your servant, my husband is dead and you know that he revered the Lord. But now his creditor is coming to take my two boys as his slaves. Elisha replied to her, how can I help you? Tell me what you have in your house. Your servant has nothing there at all, she said, except a small jar of olive oil. Elisha said, go around and ask your neighbors for empty jars. Don't ask for a few. Then go inside, shut the door behind you and your sons, pour oil into the jars, and as each jar is filled, put one aside. She left him and shut the door behind her and her sons. They brought the jars to her, and she kept pouring. When all the jars were full, she said to her sons, bring me another one. But he replied, there aren't any left. Then the oil stopped flowing. Verse seven, she went and told the man of God and he said, go and sell the oil and pay your debts. You and your sons can live on what is left. Why don't we pray this morning? Father God, thank you that you are here with us wherever we are uh, in our dressing gown, making breakfast, sitting on the couch, making coffee. I thank you that you are with us today, that your spirit is close to us, that you are Emmanuel, God with us, and you are close. And I pray that that would be our story today, that we maybe might not feel you close, but we know that it is true, that you are close to us. And we thank you for that truth this morning. And we pray that your voice would be the loudest uh, voice this morning, that as I speak, that this message will be tailor-made for each and every single person, that your spirit would uh, speak to every single person, to every single heart who's listening this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of go through this scripture and I'm going to share a few thoughts that I found helpful and uh, hopefully you find them helpful too. If you don't find them helpful, you can just uh, email Pat Allerton at St. Peter's and he'll be willing to answer all your theological questions. And um, in fact, you can call him. His number is 07, no, no, no I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> don't call him, that's just a joke. Um, you can call me, no, don't call me. Um, and yeah, so we're gonna take a few things out of this scripture um, that I thought was helpful for me. Um, verse two, he says, your servant has nothing there at all except a small jar of olive oil. I wonder what it is that you have discarded in your life or in your house, or maybe it's in your spiritual house. You've discarded it. You said, I've got nothing. I've got nothing left. Um, and I just love this, this, this simple act of obedience that this woman, this widow says, I don't have anything except. And maybe it's something that comes to your mind right now. You think, oh, I know exactly uh, I know exactly what that thing is, or maybe it's something that you need to ask the Lord about. What is it that we've allowed disappointment, regret, bitterness, unforgiveness to stop us offering our empty jars to God? What have you lost that you thought was no good? I remember uh, a story. I was going through a, a bit of a dry place with God and um, I just, you know, really couldn't feel his presence and I was not really having my quiet times in the morning. And uh, I went for, I was trying to get into a routine of running. To be honest, I probably should try and get back into that routine because it's a routine long gone. In fact, maybe that's a word for somebody this morning that you need to get back running. <laughs> no, just a joke. Um, but uh, I, I, I just prayed a simple prayer before I left. I said, Lord, I pray that you use me today. I pray that you would encourage somebody through me and I'm available. And I remember running in the park and I ran past this lady and I felt something drop into my heart and said, go back and encourage her. So uh, I prayed, uh, I didn't pray. I said, 
you know, very theological answer to, to the Lord. I, I felt, I said, no, Lord, I'm not doing that and carried on running, you know. And um, <laughs> and then I felt it even stronger in my heart. No, go back. Tell her that I love her. Tell her that I see her. So I thought, oh, no. So um, anyway, I mustered up the courage. I, I went back and I said, listen, I know this is very random, but I just want you to know today that God is a God in heaven that loves you. He sees you. He knows you and wants to draw near to you. And she just broke down in tears, completely broke down. And she told me that she had just lost her husband and that her son had just been sentenced to prison. And she just broke down and wept in this park. And uh, I say that story to say that sometimes we can often look to give God a big offering or Oh, Lord, you know, we're going to do this amazing thing for you. But often God can do so much with just an open heart, just a simple prayer. Lord, use me. You know, I, I certainly for my life, I find I'm often so busy. I'm running from place to place. I'm doing this in the house or I've got, a, you know, so much work to do. And I'm trying to impress that person. And, you know, so often it, it, we can come to church and it's just a tick list. We just tick it off. But, you know, I feel like God wants to challenge us all today. What can we offer to him? Maybe it's just a simple prayer. Lord, use me today. I'm available. Here I am. Send me, Lord. And uh, I also love in, in this story, um, what, what, there's a question that I've been asking myself. What is it that God is asking me to do that doesn't make sense? It doesn't make any sense. We see the prophet give you know, this widow strict instructions. And she had every right to complain. She was having a tough time and had just lost her husband but elijah and the spirit of god came to her and said will you trust me are you willing to be obedient when it doesn't make sense and i think for me often you know you know the scriptures say we are in the world but not of the world and, and so often we can just look with our earthly eyes and listen with our earthly ears but god is calling us to listen to a higher uh, a higher power and he is saying will you do things that don't make sense will you trust me maybe right now as i speak god is bringing something to your mind and and you know it's something that he spoke to you about many years ago or maybe it's something fresh in the moment but he's saying will you trust me to do things that don't make sense in the natural because god wants to do something greater will you help somebody you know this lady went to her neighbors and she asked for jars i mean it's very random can you imagine someone came and knocked on your door right now and was like oh hey can i uh can i borrow some jars you'd be like oh, are you crazy you know i wonder if even some of us would give somebody jars if someone came and asked you know but i i, I love this idea of just she knew that she could knock on her neighbor's door and this idea of us being a light and being a help in our community. Are, are, we, are we a people that are generous with our things? Or are we holding on to all our stuff in our house? Or we own this? Are we precious about what we have? Not just in the physical, but also in the spiritual. Are we precious about our gospel? Is it just, just about me, 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 me? Or are we willing to do things that don't make sense and bless others along their journey? In verse 5, Elisha says to the lady, go and shut the door. And I love this, this thought, that God is multiplying what you have behind closed doors. That God is multiplying what you already have behind closed doors. He says, go and close the door. And then the oil started to flow. Could it be that in the period of lockdown and COVID-19 and all the trials and struggles that we're facing, with that and all the stress that that entails that God is getting us to go inside our room and seek in Matthew 6 it says and when you pray do not be like the hypocrites for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men truly I tell you they have already had their full reward but when you pray go into your inner room Go into your inner room, shut your door and pray to your father who is unseen and your father who 
who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And for me, I've been challenged recently to get away with God and just have time. Yeah, so often we're busy doing stuff for God that we forget he just wants to hang out with us. You know, like he walked with Adam in the cool, cool of the day. I feel so often I can just forget that, that we're so busy trying to do that we forget to just be and hang out with God. Not just praying and asking him for things, but just sitting with him, talking. He is our friend. He is our comforter. When God fills our jar, there's always plenty left over. We serve a God of more than enough. But we must first bring our emptiness. What is it this morning that you want to bring to God? Maybe you feel distant this morning from him. Maybe you feel far away from his presence. Maybe you're facing lots of challenges where things are weighing on your shoulders and weighing on your mind and you feel like you just can't move forward and it feels like every day is just a hurdle and a battle. God is saying, will you lift up your hands? Will you bring your emptiness to me? Will you bring it? That's our responsibility. We've got to bring our emptiness to him and say, Lord, I'm laying it down. When you fill me, when you fill me, this morning, Matthew 11 says, Come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I just want us to have a moment just reflection and prayer this morning. Lord, show us, lead us by the power of your Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit into every household, whether you're watching on your iPhone or you're just listening to the audio or you might be watching on a laptop. But I just pray that just the Holy Spirit will just flood your house. Just right now, your household, come Holy Spirit, saturate our hearts, lead us, Guide us, show us what it is that you want to do. Why don't you give us courage, give us bravery to do things that don't make sense, that doesn't, might, doesn't quite fit the status quo. I thank you that your ways are higher than we understand, that your ways are greater. And I thank you that your Holy Spirit is here, delivering a message to each and every single person that's listening. And we bring our emptiness to you. We bring our problems, those things that are weighing us down this morning. And thank you that your Holy Spirit is just filling people right now in Jesus' name. Just even right now as I pray, just your Holy Spirit just filling us, filling us afresh. Thank you, Lord. Give us a boldness. Give us a courage. Give us people we can encourage this week. What is it we need to give away? Who is it we need to call? Who is it we need to apologize to? Maybe there's resentment in your heart this morning, something that's, that's bothering you and has been bothering you for many, many years. Who do you need to call today? Maybe there's a family friend that's caused bitterness or hurt or pain to you. And you need to call them and maybe just apologize and say, listen, I, I was wrong. I'm sorry, I wanna come and ask for forgiveness. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We praise you this morning. Amen. God bless you guys and have a great week.